Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There are at least three sides to the Roland brand. The company that builds instant classics, the company that builds stuff that no one wants, only to become an even more reality distorting classic years later, and the company that inspires memes like this. Whenever this side of Roland releases an instrument that people actually like and, admittedly, there are quite a few great products I would put in that category, they try to squeeze every single cent out of the underlying technology. An understandable business decision. One exemplary case of this strategy is the 1998 MC505. It is the successor to the first ever instrument to be sold as a groovebox, the notorious MC303, and Roland was able to iron out many of the quirks and shortcomings of this pioneering product. Long story short, today we are going to talk about the third instrument featured on this show that is based on MC505 technology, the Roland MC307. While the JX305 was marketed towards keyboarders and Ben Jordans and the D2 was obviously designed with teenage alien lifeforms in mind, the 2000-ish MC307 was released to satisfy the growing DJ crowd. Sporting a lot of similarities to the MC505, the 307 is probably the spin-off closest to the original, with some added features and many corners cut. Let's get right to it. At the first glance, the Roland MC307 is ticking all the groove boxes. The classic Roland smile with a few missing teeth, big transport buttons, a jog dial and the Technics 1210 worthy turntable emulation section. Although the main display looks much nicer than the one that can be found on the MC505, the 307 is missing many of the pro features of the original, like multiple outputs, most of the hands-on controls, the memory card slot, the dedicated before-after 7-segment displays and Roland's legendary D-Beam. The aforementioned sample-based synth engine offers up to 64 voices of polyphony and can be edited quick and dirty with the hands-on controls or in depth with a bit of menu diving. However, it can be assumed that a majority of the users only wanted to get their hands on the presets. Notable examples are the 909 kit, the stuff that 90s raver dreams were made of, bases, dreamy pianos, and epic Roland strings. You can add reverb, delay, the multi-FX unit is fine and you can switch the effects on and off with a dedicated switch. Like other fin de siècle machines, it offers a powerful sequencer that is missing many of the amenities of more recent instruments. You have to stop playback often and it will take some time until you feel at home. If there is one thing that I'm worse at than playing keyboards, it's DJ. The tempo pitch slider is super responsive and the results sound convincing. But I can't tell how well the machine fares in a real DJ set. I also couldn't find any people on YouTube who played the 307 alongside records using the turntable emulation. Feel free to leave a comment if you know such a video. The unit is rugged but lightweight and the minimalist keyboard, turntable emulation slider and transport buttons feel great. All the other controls, not so much. The knobs are a bit wobbly and the buttons don't always do as I command. Hard to tell if this is a hardware issue or a symptom of the underpowered CPU. Speaking of underpowered, it takes up to 10 seconds to save a pattern and the unit gets a bit sluggish when there's a lot of stuff going on. I have no idea what happened to the used market for these things since I bought one for 200 euro a few weeks ago. The Roland MC307 seems like a decent old school budget groove box. Why are there so many people who hate it, like it went in with a peak time bangers much too early? You have already heard the MC307 in our little intro tune. It took me a little longer than usual to find some fitting tones, but we have heard worse. Let's work the filter a bit in this groove box only jam.
interesting. I've never been a big fan of the digital roll-on filters of that time, but in this context it sounds more than fine to me. As mentioned earlier, I've used instruments with more responsive buttons, but maybe that's just my unit. I am still no expert when it comes to using the sequencer of the 307, and I wanna know if it is up to the task of being the centerpiece of a doorless setup. worked better than expected. The sounds of the 307 blend nicely with the more specialized instruments and the reverb and delay are nothing to complain about. I haven't found a way to adjust the MIDI channels though. The samples and presets of a groove box always reflect the times in which it was created and the first 10 preset patterns of the 307 are dedicated to mass market ready sidetrans of days long gone. Of course, I couldn't resist and created this shuffle rock goa Austrian style progressive Sibian dark trance mashup. Some might say that the Roland MC-307 was just another cash grab to exploit a successful and well-established technology. However, there is a reason why this technology was successful in the first place. The MC-505 derived sound engine, which itself is based on the JV-1080, offers a lot of great sounds. The arpeggiator, which I've totally neglected in this episode, is cool and Roland knew how to build a solid piece of hardware back then. That being said, all of these sounds have a certain flavor to them, you may or may not like, and I've seen more elegant sequencer designs. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, there is only one child of the MC505 left to review on the show, the EG101. I will take a look at it as soon as I get myself a truck and a bodybuilder assistant. So the question remains, is there a reason to get one of these in 2021? Well, maybe not as your primary groove box, but they are a nice way to incorporate old school dance sounds into your hardware setup and you can even choose from a variety of feature sets, styles and form factors. What is more, buying a machine like the MC307 might also be a clever investment, because statistically the next 90s revival has to be around the corner. Thanks for watching and see you next time! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.